lot of support perhaps in the live chat, but in Land of Dawn, we go to witness our first game. And this is something I do want to bring up. Arashi, Beloisky is on the Cho, a hero that we haven't seen in quite a bit. And again, we'll, we'll have to see whether or not he is going to be comfortable on this hero. It is a playmaking one, and he is already going into that enemy jungle. There you go. Yeah. Loisky here, forced to use that flicker early. Three men already hunting this guy, but I'm quite sure that he is able to escape. It's really very low for the lethal fight though, so I think Aura will have the advantage here. And you were talking again about how the early game is going to go. The lethal gets taken by Janna, so he's really doing very, very well. But Aura, even if they fall behind, they have the discipline. We have seen that they are comfortable going all the way to the late game and playing very, very calculatively. So it's a new evolved Aura, and Geekfam need to be aware of that. There's a fun fact here, ladies and gentlemen. MPL Season 4, till 7, Aura and Geek for 4 straight seasons has not come to, has not entered the playoffs. But there you go. Last season, Aura Fire broke that record. That's the thing. Coming into this matchup, right? Uh, even in the last previous matches, Arashi, four. Four matches were won by Aura. So Geekfam have a lot to prove here in this matchup. And it's all going to come down to the first early neutral objective fight. Facehugger, will he have the cold altar ready? And for the side of Geekfam, Will Elzura be able to take that cult altar away? Because we've seen many times that, there you go, they don't let him move. Oh. Aloisky has no flicker. He will go down here first blood by Samson, presented to you by Aura Fire. What a play, what a setup, and this just creates enough space for Aura Fire to take the first Lord down. If you don't want the Roamer to make a play, you take him out. The best crowd control is death. So Baloisky won't be around. Aura makes the play for the turtle, but it seems that the Geek is still contesting. Yeah, Janna Cutie will steal oh. that turtle. Call of Alter, though, forced to fight here, Luke. Very low, will not be able to survive here. I might be wrong. Luke with one HP will go down. Janna Cutie caught in the midst of Battlefield. Oh. And yeah, he will go down. Facehugger will claim that double. I don't know if that's going to be a worth trade. I think it's still Aura who walk away with a very, very valuable trade. Sure, they lose out on that neutral objective, but look at that value. Three kills going over to Aura. As that was a two for zero in terms of kills. And Geek Fam now, they're going to be on the back foot with a 1.4 thousand gold lead. And take a look as well at the emblem. Arashi, Kabuki's opted to go for the killing spree instead of the weapon mastery. He's going for aggressive plays right here, and he'll be trying to snowball that lane and make sure that he gets a double benefit of doing a lot of damage and also shutting down Kadera because later on in the late game when you have the Faramis and you have a Valentina they can steal and copy each other's cult altars right essentially it's going to be very impactful for the gold lane to be able to dish out a lot of damage so Kabuki and Kadera both have a big role to play in that later stage of the game okay you can see here Beloisky where Dragon connects on towards Kabuki with that guiding win he is able to escape what a play by Godi what a coordination and it seems like Kabuki is wow. yeah is Ooh. pressured. He's struggled, struggling to far here, top side. Even then, he's still actually able to steal away a little bit there in the jungle department from Janna QT. Again, back to the topic, that early game is very, very important, and they're already looking for a play down below. Oh, with the shards here, Luke, it's in trouble with no spells whatsoever. High will pick up the kill, and now it seems like he cannot respond. Well, I might be wrong, actually, Elzura, but outside, picks up a kill on towards high, so it is an even trade just based on that fight. Ooh, right now Beloisky though, he did get jumped on, but he'll be able to actually escape, but he turns it around Ooh. on Godiva. The flicker though, didn't reach far enough to kick him backwards towards his team. That is unfortunate as the, the turtle now spawns and there is no flicker available for Beloisky to make a play. Yeah, seems like now the turtle will be claimed by Janna Cutie. A call of Alter by both parties has been popped here. Beloisky will still be able to survive as that Kadira with that, well, Wesker, not Rammer, is not able to take any person down. Donny, it was a Nibiru, buddy. You Nibiru. know what? Here, you need the new Axe effect. That's what you need right now because the better you smell, the better you cast, Gani. Let's go. Here, let me spray it on you. Boom, bang, bada bing. Now you're fresh. Let's get back to the game. Beloisky here will take a lot of shots, but with that wave of Dragon actually, Ooh. Hi is the one who gets caught. Vaysucker is next. That was an over play, well, over committed play. Top side there by the side of our fire. A very good disengage as well from the side of Beloisky, able to read out that movement, Arashi. But five minutes in, it's time for that item check. 
Well, there's already the Enchanted Talisman for the Fate Hugger, so the Cult Altar will be very much available. Luke, though, has a lot of sustain, so if they make plays around that lane, he can always be ready to capitalize. As Kadira, right now, they need to be a bit aware, because if he lands a massive ultimate, that BOD is going to translate to a lot of damage. And Geek Fam, they're already waiting for an opportunity to try and put that into practice. Well, see here, Geek Fam, they are in the top side vicinity. They will claim this turret here as our fire will not force a fight. And I think that is the wiser move by the side of our fire. They will have to see the first structure fall top side, but they will not lose a man. We'll see here. What will Geek Fam do next? The way Geek Fam have been able to equalize that gold lead has been really, really effective, right? It was a 1.4 thousand gold lead, and now it's back down to only a 500 gold lead for Aura Fire. And as we go on through the game, I actually believe that the Beatrix will have a little bit more pressure on the map with the Renner, with the Wesker as well. More damage output when it comes to the burst, and even the DPS, if he does stick onto that Nibiru of Aloyski. Aloyski here is in. The front lines will not commit to a fight just yet. It seems like both teams here is still in the balance. Last zero, last neutral objective here for the turtle. We'll see who will grab that. Earlier we said that two turtles have fallen to the hands of Geek Fam, and that will be a third. But Aura Fire, they don't lose any members, and they're very content in doing this, letting go of these turtles. But once the Lord comes up, I think they will be a lot more aggressive in contesting that. Right now, though, Boloiski is still doing God's work for his team as much as possible. And with that play, Geek Fam has already taken the gold advantage. Going back to the statistics though, Arashi, this is exactly how we thought this match will play out. Mm -hmm. Geek Fam and Aura Fire, yes, they really like to play in that early stage, getting the snowball going uh, from the get-go. But it's a very different early stage. Aura, they go for sk uh, skirmishes around the map, they go for team fights. Meanwhile, Geek Fam, they go for team fights too, but it's always just to control neutral objectives and just the turtle, the turret structures on the board as Boyski goes down and looks for a pick. Oh, they call are committing to Fluffy here, where Dragon has been popped, but again, on a Masha, I don't think that is a very worth resource. We'll see in the mid side here as four members, five members already feeling that vicinity. Vazer is going to target Luke, comes in with that knockout strike, Ooh. but does not commit, does not connect just yet. And now, our fire, they are not healthy here. They might look for a fight here. Luke coming in, flickered to retreat, and that shard isn't, doesn't have enough stacks to give the damage, no casualties whatsoever. Very expensive ability used up already, and Geek Fam, they are staying in that mid lane. They really want to go for this turret, as they have the pressure to do so. Chadera has the Renner. He can just move onto it and hit this turret probably three more times to actually take it down. What I do want to point out that's been super, super good for the side of Geek Fam is their lane management, Arashi. The fact that they've been able to get all the neutral objectives so far has been because they were able to control the waves properly in the side lanes and even in that mid lane. Even right now you can see that Kadira is pushing as much as possible and they're sending Luke down there for that one beyond potential before rotating again towards that Lord. But Aura Fire, the Lord is usually where they turn up the pace and actually go for the aggressive plays of their own. So right now they do have control but Baloyski will have to try and say something against that. Yeah, in the mid side Zura giving a damage on towards the Faramis there. But it seems like they are already coming to this Lord here as Godiva and as well as Elzura here trying to zone each other, trying to give as much as information as possible. One man is still Elzura. downstairs. We take a look at Elzura here, taking a lot of damage by Fluffy. Lord has been resetted here. Both teams will disengage from that Lord, but it seems like they haven't found the right opening to fight. And it's good for the side of Geek Fam especially, because again, they don't need to be the ones to force out a fight. They have the better pressure on the map currently. They have the better wave manipulation as well. When it comes down to it, they even have more gold uh, right now, so they do not really want to go for any of these fights, but maybe... No, they don't collapse just yet. They're still backing off, playing the Lord slowly but surely. Yeah, Lord here is at, at half HP. Wasn't really, oh my god, backside. Kadira taking a lot of damage by Fluffy. Oh, the solo killing. Kadira there, top side. What the heck happened? And 5v4 now, or fire. They might commit to this Lord and perhaps look for a fight. Azura is quite low here. Fluffy moving here on towards Azura, of course, providing cover. Oh, call officer is piled here. Azura, can he escape this one as he is rather low? But take a look at High trying to deal damage onto his Luke here. Luke. 
needs to escape and di disengage immediately by the side of Geek Fam. This is not looking good for the side of Geek Fam here as Luke will not be able to survive. Ooh, wow. I was wrong with that flicker. He is able to, and no casualties, but Lord has been resetted. It was initially so good for Aura Fire. They were able to take down Chadera before anything happened, but Geek Fam, they were able to prolong it. And Janna, he's looking for the retry here. He's going in. Can he do it here, Janna? Can he lay for the right moment? But Hi actually gets taken down wow. as well as Gold Demo. What the heck? Kadira has only oh. damage a triple kill. Looking for a Mania Kabuki. Running for the hills here. Can he do it? With that, so Luke, though, will pick up the kill. And Jana QT will pick up the Lord. Almost wipes out here. What the heck happened? They played that perfectly. Moving back and forth. Losing Chadera. Buying time for him to respawn. And when he came back, man, they pulled the trigger. Getting the Lord. Getting the fight. And getting everything on the map right now. What a disaster for Aura Fire, man. They had all everything in control. They got the pickup they wanted, but without a, a consistent hard crowd control, they were unable to actually secure the kills onto Geek Fam. And Geek Fam just bought so much time. And afterwards, Aura Fire still went for the Lord, and Geek Fam just caught them off guard with Kadera's burst damage. That is how dangerous that Beatrix is in close range quarters. So right now, Geek Fam has a tempo. They're playing with the Lord right now, and Aura Fire, they are back into damage control. You mentioned how dangerous Beatrix is when it comes down to the small range, but even long range, Arashi, he has the Renner to just dish out so much damage onto the turret safely from out of range. And look at that, he's even taking a whole lot of HP, getting the snipes as well. Chadera making the plays happen. Well, we can see here they still want to fight Fluffy. Running for the hills is quite low on that Masha, but one base turret falls here. Geek Fam, they need to recollect in the mid side as one member is still down. Especially, can they play the discipline game? They want the mid side here. Fluffy and friends, they are trying to defend this base turret, trying to clear other ways. But take a look at the mid side. Luke trying to flank here. Base turret mid will fall, and Geek Fam, oh they realize they have no objectives on the board, they will retreat. This is the problem with Aura Fire's composition and the way they play the game, Arashi. It's very much reliant to the enemy teams taking the baits and fighting them 5v5 every single time. As you can see from the instant replay here, presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series, Geek Fam, they are not fighting up until that right moment. Exactly. Once they saw the opportunity, they just go for the fight, and Kadera was essentially free hitting, and Aura has no solution for it. They weren't in control. Oh, what? Oh, actually, the fight is now starting here. Godiva jumps in with that. So getting all the re-engaged by the side of Geek Fan. Fluffy is going to be the frontliner, but he is quite healthy, taking a lot of damage, still with two HP bars left. And now, both teams with no casualties will disengage from a fight, as, of course, in 35 seconds, the next Lord is going to be up, but Geek Fam is still in a very comfortable lead and as well as economy. Very, very comfortable. Right now, all they need to do is again just play out the waves properly. But for Aura, how are they going to be able to maybe turn the tides around? It all lies on this man, Face Hugger on the Faramis. If he is actually able to use that Shadow Stampede or stay out of range for Eldura's IMU, he might be able to have a chance. Oh, Luke here will distract the opponent, but with Ooh. that flicker, one HP will not be able to survive as that shard from high connects and he falls 5v4. Take a look at Bauman. He is already in that Lord area, but no commitments just yet here. 5v4. What can they do? They've lost a very, very important member in their team, the frontliner for Geek Fam. They need to just, again, buy time, wait for the moment to happen. They cannot force this to happen because Geek Fam, they have a man disadvantage right now. Yeah, exactly. Nice. With a man disadvantage right here, Geek Fam. We have seen them actually pull it out before, right? But they have bought enough time for Kadiver to respawn last time. So now they're buying time for Luke as Aura Fire. They're stuck in the same situation. Way pushing in the bot side. They need to actually catch fights or they need to actually rush the Lord. And they seem to be confused on what to do right now. It's a very good play for by Geek Fam, right? They were able to, again, just use the Lord, fading it back and forth. And now with the Wesker, they're going to go for the commit onto it. Okay, Luke oh! taking a look at Whoa! it. He actually managed to steal the Lord. And take a look at that one member. Two members falls from each team. And Geek Fam lost their momentum there as High got the sneak play in. 
And yeah, he sold the Lord, the enhanced Lord. This just might prolong the game, and this is just what Aura Fire needed. That was, again, so good by Aura. You know, the plays have just been happening consistently for both of these teams. But like you said, Arashi, when they don't need to care about these waves anymore, that's when Aura Fire shines. As now, we are going to take a look at the item for both of these teams. Instead, you notice that for the side of Geek Fam, the only real damage dealer is Kadira, right? We saw that Liu can do a lot of damage, but his build is very much tank. He just went for the Bloodlust X and then full tank in order to be an extra frontline, an extra bit of reliable CC. So essentially, it actually benefits Aura Fire because they have essentially two assassins that can just burst on Kadira, and if that happens, Unless there's a cult altar, it's gonna be very difficult for a geek fan. Aloyski catches Kabuki here. Oh my god, Facehugger actually is going to be the first one to fall. Can they translate to more outcomes here, Geek Fam? The immediate disengage bar are up fire, but they really need to take care of the waves top side here. Geek Fam, it was a good engage catching one member, but then again, face hugger on that fire miss is already up. But it's already really good because they have stopped Aura Fire's momentum. They've stopped Aura Fire Siege from happening. Getting the Lord taken down just by Jana QT rotating over there and obviously getting a pick. Now though, you can, oh my God, you can see the absurd amount of damage that Chadera has been outputting in this game and the damage dealt by Axe. 81,000 in 16 minutes and they look for Fluffy. Oh, is this the right target? Fluffy Wave Dragon has been wasted on this guy. Geek Fam, they will not overcommit on towards that Masha. They will disengage from any, any type of business here. Seems like Aura Fire is still waiting for the right moment. Aura Fire doesn't get the advantage in prolonged team fights just because the range coming in from side Geek Fam. The player gold by UBS Gold, Kadera is on top right there as well, despite being taken out once by Fluffy. So he is, is very much the win condition for Aura, uh, for Geek Fam because if Aura Fire makes an aggressive play with the Cult Altar, he is the one that can burst down everyone and essentially neutralize that difference. And of course, if they want to siege the rent the yeah, the Renner is just going to be so beneficial in sieging down those turrets and being in uh, consistent poke damage from a range that's way too secure for Aura Fire to capitalize on. Chadera and Kabuki leading the pack on that Ubez gold uh, in the graphic right there, but wait, Fluffy? No. Well, Fluffy here taking a lot of damage. Once again, he is a Masha. Geek fam should know better. They shouldn't overcommit onwards. Fluffy, as especially the Lord that might be evolved, is up soon. It is now still an enhanced Lord, but in 30 seconds or so, it is going to be an evolved Lord. Back again. I don't think the Clint has uh, the same amount of versatility that Chadera has on the Beatrix. So it's all going to come down to, again, how they execute these team fights. If Aura Fire can actually play front to back, enable Kabuki with its range, you, they will actually be able to somewhat win this team fight with both of the teams having a cult altar. We're gonna have to see. Lord is taken down to half HP, Gani, but Geek Fam do not want to commit just yet. They, remember, they have Chidera and they have the lethal counter with the Retri. That's a total of most well, probably three retributions here on the hands of Geek Fam. Now both teams dancing around the Lord here as Cone Alter actually pops and take a look at the Lord. Back to off retribution. QT. Very clutch here on the Lord's backside, but it seems like our fire they will force a fight. Beloisky rather low here. Will it be taken down? Four members from side of Geek Fam will run for the hills as our fire actually will trade a member for that Lord. We'll see here. Can they push the mid? Can they still get the pressure? A good fight by Aura, but a good objective take by Geek Fam. And honestly, I personally think that the Lord is going to have more value than just one member getting taken down because it was only Beloisky. If it was Chadera, then yeah, I think Aura Fire would have been able to use that, uh, that timer to actually create more plays on the map. I think Aura Fire is just very difficult because they actually use a cult altar to zone away Geek Fam, but Geek Fam were somehow able to actually kite back away from all the danger. And Elzura here looking for a play, but they have to be careful because Geek Fam, they're looking for opportunities to try and turn this around as well. Yeah. Geek Fam here will try to siege this base. Godiva with half HP is still quite confident being with the circling Whoa. eagle Whoa. actually towards the backside. Will this be the right play? Geek Fam pushed away four members, and it seems like Aura Fire. 
can somehow get a hold <laughs> on the defense. But meanwhile, one member was taking care of that Lord. So a very, very good play by our fire. It is another reset. The best defense is offense, Arashi. And you can see it from Aura. They just go guns blazing. You want to go for the siege? Nah, we're jumping in with a cult altar. And Elzura, he didn't have that cult altar yet. So again, it comes down to Elzura and Facehugger. When it comes down to the all-in team fights like that, the cult altar presence is going to be massive, and we have seen it for a lot of different teams. If you have the cult altar, you essentially have a free clear lord card, unless Geek Fam wants to actually push the tempo and fight them at their own game. But as you mentioned, that requires Elzura to have a cult altar of himself uh, prepared as well. So now it's back to the siege game, the pickoff game for inside Geek Fam, and for the most part, they're content just waiting because they have been able to actually get the jump get the advantage on Aura Fire in all of these objective team fights. Luffy is rather... Yeah, his HP is amazing. I mean, three Guardian Helmets <laughs> in hand. My <laughs> god, and the Twilight Armor. And the Twilight Armor just adds more oomph to this guy. Meanwhile, Geek Fam, if we're taking a look at the items here, Cho sold one of his items, but of course, Elzura, he was... He opted to build a Radiant Armor here on that Valentina, so... Semi-hybrid, it seems like. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting, um, very interesting build that Geek Fam have gone for, especially Elzura here, because they are actually trying to just funnel the Beatrix. I'm in my opinion right now. I don't think the Valentina does enough damage alone. She's mostly just going to be providing utility again by stealing away the Cult Altar, by terrifying, using her CC in her kit against her opponents most of the time to enable that Beatrix to deal damage. I don't know, Rashi. Do you think Geek Fam should just you know, make Elzura build more of those offensive items because right now it does seem like they are lacking in that late stage damage output with just the Beatrix alone. Well, the Beatrix can do more than enough damage for the team if it's his left alone. So Elzura can be a bit more aggressive, can be a bit more playmaking heavy if he has more defensive items. With the Radiant Armor, he can neutralize a lot of damage coming in from the Amon, the Matilda, and from the Faramis as well. All those damage sources do uh, multiple instances, which the Radiant Armor works very well against. For Kadira, he has the Athena shields just in case High makes a big play. But now Geek Fam, they're back at it again, and Godiva is already way, way too low. Yeah, Godiva is low, but Buffy doesn't care. He wants to penetrate the back line. Cult of Alter has been popped. But take a look at this. The response. High using that shot is it oh. able to take down. Remember, Veloisky with the wave dragon. Can oh, it also the gets taken down. Kadira. Geek Fam, they are trying to engage us. Face Sucker will be able to escape with wow. that guy. The flicker play, Alzura. He wants war as he takes one member, and that is Face Hugger. Such a good engage and a re-engage from Geek Fam with the Cult Altar, saving it for the last moment there. Elzura, definitely the man of the match, El, the man of the play right there in that team fight. As that just enabled Geek Fam to pop off in the team fight and to secure the Lord presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series. And it looks like Geek Fam wants to go for the end right here with the evolved Lord. Oh, all right, fighting is difficult because they can't dictate the fight right here. Godiva and Bobby go back in again, but there's only two of them against three members coming in from Geek Fam, uh, four even. And Godiva will be uh, sacrificed. Yeah. Oh no. Or not. Desperate play, desperate play there from side of Geek Fam. Seems like the Lord here evolves. Wave Dragon connects on towards Fluffy. Can he escape this one as yet? A lot of burst damage. Pop or call, call of Alter. Pops force there. But Kadira taking a lot of damage. Has still oh. had that Immortal. But it was an outplay. The Lord now. That is going to be the main focus. Immortal pops left and right here. But the Lord is going to be refocused. And as well as the base is now exposed. As Geek Fam looks for the end. And game number one. The Geek Fam. They take this game. A very good game by Geek Fam here. Securing the game in terms of that objectives, using it, creating map pressure.